Welcome or welcome back to Watch Advisor on YouTube. It's Alexander speaking, your host, and today with me is Chris Cranger here, the CEO of IWC Schaffhausen. And as you can see, I'm really live with him. It's not a Zoom call today, Chris. Albeit, I'm happy. Albeit at a distance and yeah, PCR tests and everything else. We have but done everything, PCR tested, we have safe distance, but we do it live. And I'm happy to have you. Welcome, Chris. Thank you very much. Great to see you, Alex. Great to see another human being in person. <laughs> yes. It's, it's been a year or so. so yes. What a pleasure. <laughs> yes. Uh, I sent you a picture yesterday coming from the airport in Vienna and you said, oh, nice relict of... Uh, yes, the... of the days gone by. Yeah. We often like to talk to people now who still travel. What is it like, you know? <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to get our latest notifications. Chris, Good to see you. Uh, the purpose of being here is that uh, we, did, we are just discovering the novelties. Can you quickly run us through what IWC for 2021 has been doing, yeah. is going to present, and your, which line is it, etc. So quickly run me through your novelties, please. Absolutely. My, my pleasure, Alex. So this year at IWC, it's all about our pilots collection. And that ranges back for IWC to a long-standing relationship with aviation all the way back to 1936. The then and then owners, Homberger family, they had sons who were passionate pilots and when they qualified in Croydon, south of London and finished their pilot's license, they came back and created the special watch for pilots with their father back in 1936. But what we see today in pilot's watches for IWC really goes back to our first military service watches such as the Mark 11 from 1948 that we introduced for the Royal Air Force and then later for the Royal South African Air Force. And of course, the second big milestone for IWC was the big pilot, which was a 1940s observation watch, 55 millimeters diameter, pure form follows function, big legible dial, crown to be operated by gloves, and that big riveted leather strap that couldn't fall off the wrist when worn on top of the flight suit. And that got reintroduced by IWC back in 2002 as a modern luxury watch, and that really started that oversized trend and this idea of utility and sort of a little active mindset being really at the heart of sports watches. Now, over the last three years, we've invested considerably into our new manufacturing center, about a stone's throw away from where we are here in Schaffhausen, where after spending 150 years in this location exclusively, right where Jones set us up in 1868 by the River Rhine, we have now reconceptualized watchmaking for the next 150 years. And in that context, we've started a program of introducing our in-house movements across the range from simple automatic watches all the way to complicated constant force tourbillon pieces and really built to introduce more movement technology, case technology, and more and more innovation in terms of anti-magnetism, waterproofing, and so on into the core of the range. So this year, it's all about the pilots. It's all about the big pilot. And there are two key parts to this launch. Number one, the original big pilot was always a 46 millimeter case. And of course, there are some ergonomic limitations in terms of the wearability, the comfort of this watch. So the challenge I set to the designers and the engineers was to say, can we create a big pilot that is 100% the design icon it was from the beginning, but that increases the wearability to something that fits most wrists and is comfortable to wear, where the crown doesn't touch the skin and so on. And after a lot of studies, we've introduced and found a case dimension of 43 millimeters, which is not actually a proportional work in terms of reducing the case size and height. It's actually every single dimension was looked at individually to ensure that the watch looks and feels like a big pilot in every single respect, but has the increased wearability a 43 millimeter case offers. Inside, we have our high-end in-house caliber 82 automatic with peloton winding, 60 hours power reserve, ceramic components, and we've added a sapphire glass case back with an increased waterproofing of 10 bar 100 meters. And then really one of the key features of this new watch is our quick change system, allowing us to change at the touch of a button between the leather straps, the rubber straps, and also a new five link bracelet, really ergonomic, nicely tapered, and really at the reduced size at just over 150 grams, it makes that watch ergonomically very nice and wearable. The second big pillar is our introduction of our in-house 69 caliber chronograph movement into our pilot's chronographs in a new case size of 41 millimeters. Many of the same feature, typical iconic pilot's design for IWC, bold new colors in blue and in green, and then all of the versatility of in-house movement, increased waterproofing, and the flexibility of the quick change system.
On top of that, IWC is one of the few brands that is really known for complicated movements that are both ingenious but also robust and user-friendly. This goes back to the double chronograph, of course, which was a very robust mechanism in the chronographs, but also Kurt Klaus's perpetual calendar from 1985, an extremely intricate perpetual calendar with full four-digit year display and a moon phase, double moon display for the northern and southern hemisphere. But this mechanism was at the same time very user-friendly on the single crown adjustability and very robust. And we're one of the few brands that offer that in a rugged utilitarian sports watch 46 mm case in the Big Pilot and the new Big Pilot Perpetual Calendar 46 with blue dial and stainless steel case is the new backbone of our complicated uh, watches in the Pilot's range. And the second big pillar for this year, we'll see it a little bit later in the year, is our Top Gun range. There is a host of new um, watches coming in the Top Gun range that all hark back to our cooperation with US Navy pilots, both at the schools of the US Navy that teach tactics to fighter pilots, but also to the fleet squadrons. And the first two watches we're introducing and presenting is the big pilot Top Gun Mojave Desert, which is in the tan-colored, uh, desert-colored case directly inspired by the flight equipment of naval aviators training in the canyon systems of the Mojave Desert and a big pilot perpetual calendar with that same Mojave Desert subdued dial, 46 millimeter diameter open case back and the 52 caliber ticking away inside. And both those watches will be a limited annual production. We'll be making 250 pieces of the big pilot automatic and 150 pieces of the big pilot perpetual calendar. Now, it's a multi-phase launch, so this is package one. There'll be more to come, but that's a little bit of an overview what is to come from IWC. I see. When you launched uh, the, the Mojave Desert the first time, yeah. you got copied very quickly from other brands who discovered that nice sandy color. Yeah. Uh, is this going to stay now in the, in the collection at IWC, or is it just something you put there for a couple of years and then you will hmm. take it away? Excellent question. Now, you know, colored ceramics at IWC go back to 1986 when we did the Da Vinci Perpetual Calendar chronograph in different ceramic colors. There are some really bold ones as well, which you keep hidden away in the archive. I think oh, they've never fancy colors from the past. Fancy colors from the past, <laughs> never seen the light of day while well, the 80s, what can you say? Yeah. White ceramic gold pushes, yeah, yeah. we had crazy stuff. But then again, the, the colored ceramics today in the Top Gun, they really go back to the military themes in naval aviation. Yeah. And you will see the Mojave is the first color code we're launching, but there'll be more to come okay. even this year and we'll present it a little bit later okay. in the year, but they're going to stay in the collection. Yes. I fully understand. I thought mm. so that you are going to continue to play yes. with those cards. I was, I was amazed to see how quickly you got copied by someone. Yes. When you, I yes. saw the watch and then only weeks later we saw another one and I said, oh. Yeah, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's either two people have the same idea yeah. at the same time yeah. or it's quick copy. No, then it's a proof that you're on the right side, that Definitely. you did something. Oh, yeah. Uh, another question to that in the interchangeability of all those straps and bracelets. Yeah. You are the first to do it really, really in terms of from A to Z you can yeah. change everything. Yeah. Um, if someone buys uh, a watch, uh, what are the prices he has to pay for getting either uh, the, the bracelet or the rubber strap or the leather strap? Uh, what are yeah. the price uh, jumps well, he has to do? Typically, um, you know, the, the leather straps and the rubber straps are all on the same sort of price point. And typically the upgrade that we're asking is between 750 Swiss francs and 1000 Swiss francs for the metal bracelet, the five link yeah. bracelet. But really, I, I would still encourage everybody to try this on ergonomically, mm. look and feel the quality, the side flexibility yeah. in the bracelet. I think it would be hard pushed to find a similar quality execution stainless steel bracelet in sub 10,000 uh, price range of watches. So it's really, really a huge upgrade in terms of wearability, in terms of look and feel and longevity for the watches as well. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned it with the quick change system, the added benefit is as well if you order accessories replacement online, not just to accessorize your watch, but also straightforward to replace a leather strap. It's now much easier. You can order it to your home. You yeah. can just no tooling. Click it you just on. do no it by yourself. Required. It's easy. No. You push on the on the absolutely on a, on a button. It opens up, and and, and you also have that uh, ingenious length micro length adjustment. Yeah, the, the fine adjustment the, system. That's 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 yeah. ingenious. It's a push button yeah. on the yeah. on the clasp. You you press it, and you have five millimeters of adjustability. Just you know, depending on heat, climatic conditions, yeah, how yeah. you feel in the day. It's something really useful that I, I miss actually in the, in the irregular pin buckles quite a bit. But this really gives you a, a huge amount of comfort. I see. Um, in terms of, of chronograph, you have now introduced a very uh, dynamic green. Um, yeah. um, that's also, let's say, a little bit of a, like, we could talk about a military color. Mm. Are you thinking about other colors coming to the, yeah. uh, 
to the chronograph, uh, we have black, blue, and now that really, yep. would you call it a military or more racing green? It's a racing green. I mean, it's, it's a racing a, it's green. A, it's a deep uh, forest green. At the okay. end of the day. No, you could call it military, I guess. So. <laughs> no, really, the, I mean, we see the color trends uh, are quite long term in sports watches. And we've seen the blue, even though we made blue dials ever since 2001 or two for a long time. The really the, the main sports watch trend started maybe in 15, 16, when that really became the number one choice for sports mm -hmm. watches. We've seen green getting increasingly popular in the last two and a half, three years. And now this is clearly something that works in classical watches, Portuguese chronograph, even in ladies watches, Portofino 34, but also very much in the pilots. And we're now happy to offer that. And then there's colors that are coming. You saw the burgundy from the Hamilton last year and the Portuguese are coming through. And there'll be more new colors later on this year that will open up that spectrum a little bit as well. Are you also orientating a little bit on what car manufacturers do? Because they are mostly uh, giving the trends and the, the yeah. watch industry is following those yeah. trends. So you That's look a at very interesting point because we're discussing this very avidly and I'm looking at my screenshot reference pictures where my color code's coming from. And interestingly, over the last year or so, it's shifted quite a bit from cars towards fashion. And especially now what we see in color combinations and sneakers, I think is probably an even stronger influence <laughs> than what we have in cars, which at the moment tend to be dark gray or dark gray or yeah. dark gray. Yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> Last question, Chris. How do you see 2021 for IWC Schaffhausen? The la I, I don't want to talk about the last yeah. year. It's, it's gone. Let's throw yeah. it away. 2021. Looks at the moment remarkably similar to the last year. <laughs> but, yeah. but we're no, here live. Yeah, absolutely. We're here live. And I'm sure that with the vaccination program ongoing, we'll, we'll see a little bit of a normalization uh, during the year. And we're excited really to connect with people again. It's been a long slug on, on Zoom, definitely for everybody. It's not easy to build relationships that way. You can mention relationships but really meeting our clients again building new partnerships building relationships we can't wait to get back to that and hopefully as the year progresses we've got a very nice roadshow prepared to bring our pilots watches to a, a much larger audience across Europe the United States and as soon as we can we'll be out there we'll be meeting people and hopefully bringing the fascination for mechanical watches to a whole new audience yeah you can't imagine how happy I am to be here when I got off the train yesterday when I landed in Zurich and I came to Zurich Airport I uh, tended to kiss the ground like the Pope does because I was so happy to be back in Switzerland. It was okay. September now last year. Now you need year. to quarantine for at least two weeks. Oh, uh, no, uh, yeah, no. <laughs> Chris, thank you. Good to see you, Alexander. Um, thank you for having me. Thanks for doing that presentation for us. And yeah, we uh, keep our fingers crossed for 2021. And yeah, definitely. My and pleasure. Thank you for watching, everybody. Thank you for taking yeah. part. Thank see you all soon. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs>